In lesson six, we're going to begin going through some of the more useful apps that I like in Windows 8. We're going to learn Internet Explorer, both the desktop and the app version. We'll learn about the People app, where you track your contacts. The Mail app, where you can send and receive email. And I'll show you how to connect to an outside service like Gmail to sync your contacts and your emails and your calendars and such. In this lesson, I'm going to walk you through some of the more popular apps and applications that come with Windows. I'm only going to scratch the surface of a lot of different apps because I want to show you a wide range of all the things that are available. In future classes, we'll go into some of these apps in a lot more detail. But for today, I just want to paint a broad picture for you so you can see all the different things that are available. And of course, I encourage you fully to play with this stuff. It's very hard to break Windows. So if you're not quite sure what something is, go ahead and click on it. Nine times out of ten, if you're going to do something dangerous, Windows will say, hey, are you sure you want to do this? If you're not sure, then just click no or cancel and don't do it. But feel free to explore and play with stuff. The first thing I want to look at is Internet Explorer. It's the one thing that everyone wants to learn how to do is how do I browse the web? Well, it's very straightforward. Now, there's, remember, there's two different Internet Explorers. There's the full application in desktop mode, and there's the Windows app. Now, the desktop app right here, open this up, by default takes you to MSN. If you want to go somewhere else, just click right here in this thing called the address bar, and you can type in something like Google.com, and then press Enter, and that will take you to Google. Or you can go to 599cd.com, and it will take you to one of my websites. If you want to go back to the last site you were on, just click on the back button over here. That will take you back, back to Google. And this button here will take you back forward again. If you want to browse multiple sites at the same time, you can click on this little tab over here to open a new tab. Now, you can click on one of the things you've recently been to, like Google, or you can type something else in. For example, uh, let's say if you want to go to Twitter.com, and that will take you to Twitter's homepage. And now you can easily flip between the two of these by just clicking on the different tabs. Now, I spend a whole hour-long lesson on just going over the different features and settings in Internet Explorer, and there's different browsers you can download, too. There's Google Chrome. There's Firefox, there's a bunch of other third-party ones, so I have a whole separate lesson on browsing the Internet and using Internet Explorer in that. But this is just to give you a quick idea of how Internet Explorer works. Now, when you go to close it, it says you want to close all tabs or close just the current tab. All right, you can close the current tab, which is Twitter, or you can also close the tabs by clicking there, and if that's the last tab open, it closes down Internet Explorer. Now, the... Windows 8 app version of IE is pretty similar, except you'll see down here on the bottom, there's the address bar. And this is really optimized for tablet or phone use. So you pretty much only see one thing at a time here. So if I go to Google now, it'll take me to Google, see? And here's your back button. Here's your refresh button to reload the page. There's pin the site, settings, the forward button, and so on. And if that goes away, you can right-click, and that brings up that menu. All right, and I'll hit Alt-F4 to close that and go back to the Start menu. The next thing I want to talk about is the People app right here. Click on People. Now, Microsoft wants to store your contacts up on their server since we now have a Microsoft account. If you didn't have a Microsoft account, it would want to store these as local contacts. I like them stored as a Microsoft account because if you lose your computer or something happens, you don't lose all your contacts. It's like my phone. I've got an Android phone, and all of my contacts are scored up on Google's server, which is great because if you break your phone or lose it or you buy a new phone, you don't have to download all your contacts again or load them all in from somewhere else. They're stored on their server. Now, Windows is asking if this is an active sync exchange account. I'm going to say no. All right, this is a normal, regular, standard account. Now, if you want to add contacts to your people list, just right-click or swipe up from the bottom, come down and go to New. Now you can type in New Contacts. Okay? You can pick which account these are going into. Right now we only have one account, my local account. All right? Put in the person's information, Joe Smith XYZ Corp. 
All right, you can put their email address in here. Let's say Joe at, I'll just put Amicron.com just in case. Their phone number, their address, and any other information you want, and then hit save. Okay, now Joe Smith is stored in your contacts. Okay, I'll go back. And now you can see an alphabetized list of all of your contacts will show up over here. Now notice up top here it says connected to and the little M here. Right now I'm only connected to my Microsoft account. If you click there, you'll see this accounts thing pops up. Now, the nice thing about the People app is that it can synchronize all of your contacts from all the different social sites you might happen to be on. Your Facebook contacts, your Google, Gmail contacts, Twitter contacts, and so on. So you can click on Add an Account right here. And here are all the different services you can connect to. Once you connect to one of these different services, the People app will keep all of those people listed for you. Now, I'm not going to run through this right now in class. We'll cover this in more detail in a future lesson. But it's a pretty straightforward, simple process. Just pick the, the different account you want to connect to, like Facebook. Type in your login information for Facebook. And then the People app will automatically bring all your contacts in. So that's kind of nice. And that's usually the first thing that I do for a customer when I'm setting up a new Windows 8 machine. Is I come in here and I connect to all the different social accounts. Because once you've got this set up, then all the other apps will use these people. When you go to send an email, all your contacts are already in there from all these different services. Okay, let's exit the People app. That next brings us to the Mail app. Let's click on Mail. Now, Mail is asking me to connect to my Windows Learning Zone at Amicron.com account. That's the email address that I gave it to set up my account with. Now, I don't want to connect to this email address. I don't want Windows to use that email address at all because I'm going to use a separate program for it that I've got on a different computer. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a new email account to use just for this machine. So I'm going to just click Cancel. Now, we can add different email accounts here. There's Hotmail, Outlook.com, Google, AOL, and you can add any of these different types of services to your Microsoft account. Now, unfortunately, the mail program that comes with Windows 8 does not support PopMail, P-O-P. And I would say 80% of the different email servers that are out there use PopMail. My company mail server that I use and my GoDaddy server that I have an account with. Both of those are PopMail. Now, there's a way around it. You can forward that PopMail through a service like Google and then pull it in through here. Or you can program Google or Hotmail to go out and get that mail and then pull it down. So we're going to need an email account on one of these services in order to be able to use the mail app. So let's, let's set up a Gmail account. I'm personally preferential to Gmail. Well, let's come down here, go to Start, and let's go back to the desktop. I like using Internet Explorer out here. So open up Internet Explorer. We're going to go to gmail.com. Click on the address bar, gmail.com. We'll set up a free email account using Gmail. All right, come right over here, create an account. Put my name in, Rick. Whoops, I can't type today. Rick Rost. Now, what username do I want? I'll go with Windows Learning Zone again. A password. All right, confirm it. Again, put in your birthday, October 23rd, 1972, mail. And all the different setup, uh, the setups for the different types of free email services like Hotmail and that, they're pretty much all the same. Okay, your current email address, we'll use that Windows Learning Zone at Amicron.com that I had before. Set Google as your default home page if you want. I'll turn that off. Actually, yeah, let's leave it on. Let's leave it on. All right, prove you're not a robot. All right, we'll type in those two words there. It looks like but, and then what is that? An L-S-O-R-T-H-E-R, -E maybe. Okay, location United States. I agree. And then next step. Okay, would you like to use the following as your home page? Sure. All right, yes. 
Okay, here we go. It's saying that you can set up a Google profile. I'll just skip this step for now. Next step. All right, welcome. And then continue to Gmail. And it loads right up. This is the basic Gmail interface. Okay, welcome. You can go through a tour. I'm just going to close this for now. I use Gmail all the time, myself. Gmail has really good spam filtering. They catch, I would say, 90% of the spam that comes in, and they get rid of almost no good mail. Very few false positives. Okay, but the reason why I set this up, and you can set up any email account you want through those different services. The reason why I set that up was so I can show you how to use the mail app. All right, so let's go back to the start menu. Let's go back into mail. All right, let's connect Google. We'll type in our Google email address, Windows Learning Zone at gmail.com and our password. Okay. Now, include your Google contacts and calendars. Any contacts that you have set up on Google and any calendars that you have set up over there will automatically show in Windows. We haven't talked about the calendar app yet, but I'll connect now. It's going to connect that account to mail. And any mail that we have, see there's the Gmail team mail that was up on Google server. It came right in here. See that? You can synchronize all your different accounts right in here. And like I said before, if you have company email that uses PopMail, you can have Gmail grab that PopMail and then it shows up here in your Gmail. That's what I do with my Amicron.com and 599CD.com mail. That's a little more advanced. We're going to have a whole separate lesson on just using email with Windows. And if you use Microsoft Office and you have Microsoft Outlook, that app is much more powerful than just the built-in mail app. All right, but this I just wanted to get you started. Now, if you want to send someone an email, just click on the plus button right here, new. Okay, who are you sending it to? Well, if you know their name or email address, just start typing it in here or click on the plus button right there. That will bring up the people app that we typed earlier, and you can just pick Joe Smith. All right, you'll see all your different contacts in here. Notice now how we're now connected to Microsoft and we're connected to Google. Right, we'll hit add, and Joe Smith goes in right there. Okay, add a subject, type right here. This is a piece of email. Right, and then add a message. This is the body. All right, see that? You can get rid of that send from Windows Mail if you want to. Okay, when you're done, hit the send button. There's send and then there's cancel. I'll hit send, and that piece of email went out. And you'll see it in your sent items box right over here. All right, there it is. Okay. When mail comes in, it comes into your inbox. You can read it over here in a preview pane. You can scroll up and down. All right, you can click on another one. To delete a piece of email, you come right over here and hit delete. All right, and this button here is the re respond or reply button. Okay, so that's email in a nutshell. Now you know enough to be dangerous to set up an account, to connect to a different service if you want to, like Gmail, and to send and receive email. And there's all kinds of extra stuff I show you in the email lesson about adding attachments and all kinds of extra things. But I'm going to close this for now, Alt F4.